This is my trash can Mac Pro from 2013, and today we're going to try running Windows on this thing. That's right, we are continuing my quest to find the best operating system for this aging trash can. Uh, last video, we went over the specs. We bought this for £220, did a few upgrades to it to kind of max it out. And now we're looking for the right software for it. The latest version of Mac OS wasn't so great. It was a little bit buggy. Understandably, it's unsupported. Um, and I feel like we can do better with other operating systems. So today we're trying Windows. Why not? It actually is incredibly easy to install Windows on these Macs. So I thought I would give that a go um, and we'll see what it's like for gaming and maybe this can have its life as a Windows gaming machine. All right, let's get into it and check it out. So the actual process for installing Windows on one of these Macs or really any uh, Intel Macs is very, very straightforward. There's a piece of software called Bootcamp which is included on Intel Macs and that basically automates the process of dual booting Windows 10 uh, onto these computers. So you can go through the whole setup utility, you can select your ISO for your Windows 10 distribution, you can select how much of the disk partition you want to use, and all these sorts of things, and then macOS will inject all the drivers that you need into this install process, so when you first boot up Windows 10, you'll install the drivers that that Mac needs. So all in all, the actual install is probably one of the smoothest Windows installs I've ever had. Very straightforward, very easy. It just works. You are limited here officially to Windows 10. These particular Macs don't have the is it TMP, TPM? I forget the acronym, but the module that's required for, from a security perspective to install Windows 11. You can obviously bypass that in Windows 11. There are ways around it, but just officially only Windows 10 is supported. So we're going with that today. So once Windows was all installed, like I said, very straightforward. Now we hit our first kind of issue. The bundled GPU drivers that come with Bootcamp are at this point very old. Understandably, because Apple has officially discontinued these things quite a long time ago now, so they're obviously not uh, bundling new drivers, providing any more software support or anything else like that. And you kind of have a dilemma that you have to face when it comes to the GPU drivers here. The ones that come with it are obviously kind of Apple verified, they're the approved drivers, and they do work very well. They also support Crossfire. So in many games, you can actually force both GPUs to be used when rendering the game. Now that doesn't give you like double the performance that you might expect when you've doubled the GPUs, uh, but it does give a performance boost compared to one GPU and does give you access to that full six gigabytes of VRAM across the two graphics cards. However, it does not support newer APIs. For example, there is no Vulkan support in those drivers. They are very old at this point. So you're faced with a dilemma, like I said, either you can keep those drivers and kind of have better out of the box support for those dual GPUs. So again, if you're looking to maybe just play games that are from the era that this Mac was actually from, you could probably get away with that. However, if you do want to play newer games, especially games that require Vulkan, you're going to need to update the graphics uh, drivers, which can be done. There are newer versions supplied by AMD that still support the graphics cards that are in this machine. And that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and did that. Uh, downside to that is kind of Crossfire as a thing isn't really supported by AMD anymore. Uh, they the whole idea of having multiple graphics cards in one machine, for gaming anyway, is kind of long gone. We've realized that it's better to just scale a single GPU, you get way more performance that way, way more um, performance per watt as well. So the idea of multi-GPU gaming setups, it's kind of dead in the water. It's no longer supported in drivers. 
There is the uh, option to still try and force the use of multiple drivers. This is there as a legacy thing again uh, for kind of what seceded Crossfire, which was uh, support for doing this for VR games. Uh, but even that, I never actually managed to get work. So it was only games that actually officially support multiple GPUs that I have been able to run across both GPUs. Any games that don't support that, which again, most modern games don't bother because it's just not something that people are doing anymore. You're not going to get that support, so you are going to be limited to using just one of the GPUs. So with everything installed and set up, let's run some benchmarking and see what this thing can do. First off, of course, naturally, I did another Geekbench run. Uh, this was mainly so I could compare it against the uh, version we ran in the last video in Mac OS. And we got a single core score of 630, which was less than we got in Mac OS. So I don't know if there's just some inefficiencies here in terms of the load that Windows puts on the system or what's going on there, but we did get a lower score. And then we got a multi-core score of 4,575, which again was about 500 points lower than our multi-core score on Mac OS. So from a purely CPU performance point of view, Windows doesn't seem to be doing so well there. On the graphics side, OpenCL scored a score of about 16,800, which again, quite a bit lower than we had on Mac OS, which is a shame, but nonetheless, there it is. And we did get a Vulkan score of about 18,900. So, you know, if you're comparing that to other th things, it's not terrible, but that is only using one of the GPUs. So you do only have three gigabytes of VRAM available with these uh, D500s that are in my version of the trash can. So it's not the most performant of things. But anyway, much more importantly, let's look at some games and see how they perform. So first up, we have Half-Life 2, which does actually support multi-core rendering. It does allow multiple GPUs to be used. And we can definitely see that here. Here, running at 1080p, everything whacked up to full whack, we get a solid above 200 FPS. This is buttery smooth and actually really quite enjoyable. Uh, of course, this is Half-Life 2. This is a very old game now and, you know, it does run on a potato, but still, it's nice to see that really buttery smooth gameplay with those two GPUs being used. So I thought, well, let's try and punish the system a little bit and I cranked it up to 4K. Uh, and this is where it did start to fall down. We still managed 70 plus FPS, but it was really hitching all over the place. Those frames were not coming in smoothly in the slightest. It was completely unplayable, to be honest. With hitches happening every few seconds, it was not a nice experience. And so, yeah, okay, it can render the frames, uh, plenty of frames in a second at 4K, but it's not playable like this at all. So you'd need to stick to 1080p, which to be honest, makes sense. This is definitely not a 4K gaming machine in any regard. So another game that's definitely getting along in the tooth now is GTA 5, but that also supports multi-core rendering. So here we have both GPUs working together and we're able to basically max out all of the settings in this game and still get a solid 80 plus FPS. Again, it's very smooth. It's pretty good. Um, and yeah, you know, it shows that when you can use both of those GPUs together, you're getting really quite decent performance. Of course, the downside is that, especially now, games don't support that anymore. So again, you're kind of having to look to older games if you want to be able to do that. Moving over to something a bit more CPU intensive, and we have a look at Minecraft. This is like running the latest version of Minecraft, and it does it quite happily. Uh, it is only run using one of those GPUs, but we get a solid 100 plus FPS and we're getting, you know, dips of down to about 80, 70, 80 in more dense loading areas, generating new chunks and that sort of thing. It's not too bad. I definitely would call this completely playable and a decent experience. This is with all the settings turned up as well. So, you know, some tuning here and you'd have a very good time. So if you're looking for a half decent fairly cheap Minecraft machine, maybe a Mac Pro is the one for you. Another game that I always think is a really good test and benchmark is Fortnite. It's very popular, uh, but it also has a really wide range of graphics settings. And here, 
uh, it didn't do so well. Certainly running at 1080p in the lobby area where you've got a lot of characters and a lot of things going on, uh, it struggled. It really did struggle. Even when we actually got into some gameplay, things started to settle down a little bit. Still struggling around that 50 FPS. It definitely wasn't a smooth 50 FPS. This is what I would describe as borderline playable. If you really, really, really had to play Fortnite on this thing, sure, you could do it, especially as you could lower the resolution or play around with the settings a bit more. But at low settings, it's not a great experience. And this is where it starts to really show its age. And then another benchmark favorite of mine is Doom Eternal, which is a game that runs on the Vulcan API. And yeah, we're really getting into rough territories here, down to about 30 FPS with low settings at 1080p. Now this is quite a smooth 30 FPS. Its pacing is okay. And, you know, I would actually say this is more playable than the 50 FPS in Fortnite. It kind of shows that the amount of frames you're generating per second is not the only thing that makes for a playable game. Uh, 30 FPS, if it's super smooth, is actually completely playable in my opinion. Uh, in kind of more busy, action-y scenes, definitely dropping down to about 20 and kind of noticing that slowdown a bit. But again, if you had to play Doom on this thing, you could. You definitely could. And for a machine that did only cost around £300 after the upgrades all in, it's not terrible. I've definitely seen worse. And finally, because I really like to punish the hardware that I get my hands on, we're going to try Cyberpunk. And uh, yeah, at 1080p, with all the frame generation, AI, AMD effects on to try and get as much performance as we can, it's a bad time. We kind of just about managed to hit 30 FPS, but the game looks so bad. You can see textures loading in, you can see the like dithering as objects are uh, rendered and oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. I could not play this like this. It is bad bad time indeed do not recommend yeah there we have a brief look at windows 10 um yeah we mainly focus on the gaming side of things and, and that's partly because everything else does just work kind of fine like if you just need a machine to browse the internet stream video this actually does still do that but it does it just as well if not better under mac os so there would be no benefit to installing windows unless you had a piece of windows software that you needed to run on this thing Still, for gaming, it's not working out so well. If you wanted to stick to mid-2010 games, 2015, that kind of era, yeah, okay, you could get away with it, especially if you kept the older drivers. I think that would actually be better because you could squeeze a bit more performance out when games don't support the multi-core rendering. But otherwise... It's a shame to see uh, <laughs> because it really does highlight the fundamental issue with this Mac Pro in that Apple banked heavily on the idea of multi-GPU machines and the rest of the world went, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to do single. Um, and yes, obviously an extreme kind of enterprise and scientific workloads and very specific workloads, multi-GPUs are still used but not in the way that Apple was hoping they'd be used with this Mac Pro. So, yes, if you're looking to run more modern games, you're going to have a pretty rough time there, as essentially you've got half the GPU power available to you. The other thing that this might work quite well with is emulation, but I wouldn't do that on Windows. I think Windows is an overhead that doesn't need to be there. So we'll have a look at that with a different operating system in the future. But I suffice to say, I am not happy with Windows on this as the operating system of choice. And we are going to continue our search for the perfect operating system for this Mac Pro. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I have, as always, enjoyed putting it together. And if you have enjoyed it, please do make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. We're still a very small channel, so every single subscription really does make a difference. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.